Hey guys, so this is the settings and customization BF2 Pro Tips episode. Essentially, I'm going to be going through a lot of things here today about how you can edit your game in order to give you an advantage and just make your play experience a bit better in the quality of life department. A lot of really good experienced and professional players at this game, those who have played for a very long time, could probably learn a thing or two from this. Um, I'll probably change a few settings, so hopefully I uh, give you information both to new players and old players, and hopefully I explain it well enough that you guys understand uh, understand what you're doing. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and open up our Battlefield 2 folder. This can be located uh, pretty much anywhere. This is just basically wherever you've installed BF2. So mine's in uh, Steam because I uh, run Battlefield through Steam. Um, so what we're going to do is firstly, you're going to have to realize that uh, all the commands we're basically changing here today uh, are in two locations. Um, you can't edit anything directly here. BF2 has a system where everything's kind of stored in mods. So XPack is Special Forces and BF2 is just a standard BF2 mod. So you're going to want to go into uh, mods uh, and then BF2. The first file we're going to look at is going into init.con. So this is essentially the file that uh, controls what happens when the when the game launches. Um, you can change these values here uh, from 1 to 0 and this will stop the, the files from launching. Um, whenever you start, so you don't have to watch the intro videos. The, the battle log launcher does that automatically now anyway, but just something to consider um, if you can't run through the battle log launcher. Like me, I can't actually run the game through the battle log launcher. I have to run it through the AXE. Um, so in the second uh, thing we can do here is go into movies and we can rename the videos as well. Uh, and just put it, I've just put a dot after all of them and it just stops the videos from playing again. That's like a double fail safe, you know, just in case I really needed to, uh, really need to get in there. Uh, the next thing we'll look at is localization. So um, I use localizations that were created by someone else. They were created by a gentleman called Mike. I'll have a link in the description uh, and I'll probably also put in some values there you can fill around with and change uh, just to make it easier for you to uh, work out what you're doing. Um, so back in the day, I had my own custom localizations. And when I came back, I was like, I'd really like to get them, but no one that I knew still had the ones that I made. So I searched around and this guy basically had the customization, uh, the localizations that are after. So what are localizations? Okay. These are essentially any piece of text in game is pretty much controlled by this single file. Um, in your version, if you don't have custom, custom localizations, there'll be like maybe five or six files here. This guy's compacted them all into one. Um, and this controls everything from um, what appears on your screen when you load into the game, um, what appears when so an enemy is spotted, uh, how the top left-hand corner looks when kills are displayed and that kind of thing. So this is a very, very big folder. As I say, this is made by Mike, this is someone else, and this is like a pro bare bone localization. So as he says here, this is all about getting rid of um, long retired weapon names. It's getting rid of uh, annoying colors. What it is, it's like a essentially like a pro way of playing the game right we just want to get we just want to strip the game of any useless information and just replace it with good stuff so for instance if someone tries to spot something that doesn't actually get spotted and they just go enemy forces spotted it just puts a line there so you just see their name and then a line kind of removes the clutter from the text my favorite part about this is the fact that it also uh, changes stuff like team kills so typically in the game you can't see who team kills who and what they oh sorry you can't see what someone has team killed someone with and that information can be kind of useful right even as an, a server admin you can see you know what's going on maybe if you see a certain team kill like oh, that doesn't look too good um and also in, in respect to if you see like a really good enemy jet pilot at the start of the game team kill someone with like a a, a mig or a, a j10 you're going to know that they're in the air so you can kind of use that information to uh, to really help you you can fiddle around with this if you want guys um there's nothing really that you can do uh in terms of messing it up too bad you know you just have to follow the format um this stuff here is about the color uh, so it just changes the color that what stuff looks like. Uh, and you can troll F pretty much anything, you know. There's so much localization in here, though. I mean, all of this stuff is pretty useless. You can change it whatever you want. It doesn't, doesn't make a difference. Um, I'm fairly sure that the dead message is in here as well. Maybe I'm going crazy. Yeah, so this one, essentially, you can change your uh, dead prefix in chat, which is kind of interesting. So whenever you get killed or whenever you're dead, because... Um, dead chat kind of works differently to a live chat. So if you're dead, someone who's alive can't actually see your messages. Um, and this only really works like the start of the game because most people are alive when they're playing Battlefield 2, right? But at the start of the game, if you type something, um, your the, the part that says your name and then uh, in stars dead is actually controlled by this element here. And so what Mike's done here is just put uh, this... Um, 
like sort of weird double S C one oh oh one, which uh, changes the color and makes it a little bit larger. I'm fairly sure. Um, you can fiddle around with this and change it to whatever you want. You can say like greatest battlefield two player of all time, although obviously you can't because that's my title. Uh, but yeah, anyway, guys, I'll, I'll give you a download link for this uh, in the description. You just delete every single other localization and then just put it there. Oh, one, one other thing as well. It really cleans up like kick votes and mutiny votes. I fucking hate kick votes and mutiny votes. They're so pointless. They're so useless. Anyway, yeah, localization, really, really good. So the next thing we're going to go into is... Let me have a look here on my note settings. So we're going to go into settings. Now, you'll notice a file in here called controls. So uh, uh, Battlefield 2 mods BF2 settings controls. This one, I don't know what this is. I think this is the default controls. Um, so I think this is just, if you edit this, any new character will be made with this. We are going to edit a controls file later, but that's elsewhere. Um, so the file that we are going to edit here is called sound. There's quite a lot to get through here. Um, these are my preferences. Other people may have other preferences, but on my testing and that kind of thing, this, these are the best values possible. Um, and this, I'd, I'd really urge you to make the changes that I recommend here. So the first change that we're going to be making is to balance 2D, 3D, default, and EAX. So both of these values will be default 0 0.5. Um, these control the level of noise that is applied when someone spots something on your team. Uh, be it another player or a commander, and also your own weapon sounds. So Battlefield 2 is literally one of the loudest games in the world. And when you constantly hear enemy units spotted, enemy units spotted, it gets really, really frustrating. What you can do is set this value. I put mine at 0 0.9. It makes it loud enough so I can still hear uh, important information like enemy jet spotted, enemy helicopter spotted, that kind of thing. Um, and it removes the gun sounds and that kind of thing. And that doesn't really bother me too much. I don't really care too much about hearing all of that. Um, so I definitely recommend putting these values to 0 0.9s, guys. It's a really, really important tip. This is like my top BF2 tip for people who rage at me when I'm spotting like a uh, madman when I'm uh, commanding. So the next setting is uh, air absorption. So we're going to set this first value to 5,000 and this next value to 20,000. I fiddled with these settings quite a few times, and this seems to be like the best the best you can basically get. This means that you can hear things from further away. Um, they'll be a little bit quieter, but the range at which you start to hear things is increased, uh, and the range at, at which things uh, disappear when they're running away is also decreased. So, yeah, I definitely recommend uh, sticking to these values. You can fill around with them. I don't know what the defaults are here, but yeah, just put the first one to 5,000 and then the second one to uh, 20,000. The next setting is going to be on tinnitus. So, you'll have two uh, tinnitus files here. This one, I think this, I don't know what this value is, but I'm sure it's not 0, 0.00. So we want to change this one to, to 0, 0.00. Um, and then we've got one more file as well. Uh, change this one from 0, 0.00. So when you like kind of hear a nade, you kind of get like this ringing noise sound in your ear, um, which to like someone who's trying to play the game, well, yeah, okay, it removes the immersiveness. But if you're trying to be good at the game and you want to, you know, kind of get away from that immersive environment and make the game a bit easier to play, then definitely put those values to, um, to 0, 0.00. Just give me one second, guys. I just want to make sure. Yep, so that's all the sound settings uh, out of the way. Usersettings.com. Now, this is a file that like people think they know so much about, and they don't. And even I don't. So I don't think there's ever been like any sort of verifiable evidence regarding whether usersettings.com actually changes anything. Uh, my personal theory and preference is that it doesn't. I think what a lot of people say it's just personal anecdotes. And obviously when it comes to um, evidence and proving things, personal anecdotes are not important. Um, we need to have verifiable data. We need to have verifiable information. And as far as I can tell with user settings.com, it doesn't make a difference. So I wouldn't bother editing that. I wouldn't bother caring. I'm sure there's going to end up being some raging debate on the forums about how I'm so wrong. But all I'll ask people is, where is the evidence? And uh, your personal experience and you going 50 and 0 when you edit your user settings and 0 and 50 when you don't is not sufficient evidence. So this is all done with the, uh, the this actual area, guys. The next area that we're going to go to is in documents. So you've got documents, Battlefield 2, and then profiles. Um, the global one here, the first file, um, this sets which is the default user. So all profiles are set in uh, values. So 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0.0001 is the first one that you make. And I think you can only have one with battle log anyway. You can have offline ones, obviously, but 
um oh no you no you can have other ones it's just you can't you have to create a new account for them that's right yeah so you can have multiples in here uh but i only play one account at the moment anyway uh watch out for my alias coming out in the near future um so you can set your prefix to anything that you want here so if i want to have the prefix like you know king I can change it to king. You can change this in the game as well when you load up and you want to log in. Something you can't do in game is special symbols. So for instance, dollar sign, dollar sign, dot, dot, dollar sign, right? I can't have that as my prefix if I'm trying to insert it in the game because it doesn't like these special characters. You can put in a range of special characters. Maybe one day I'll make a list of what special characters you can put as your prefix. Uh, some people have like pretty interesting ones. Um, it's kind of funny. It's kind of cute. But if you want to put something custom in there, then definitely go ahead and fill around with this. I think you can only have a maximum of six in a name. Am I right? Yeah, I think it's a maximum of six. Um, what are we looking at next? Yeah, anyway, we want to make sure we save that. Um, and this is the this is my profile. Um, so this is kind of the settings of all the things. If I log in with a different profile, it will have different settings here. But yeah, I'm not going to. So controls.com, this is where like... This is like the juicy settings, guys. This is like, oh, I'm suddenly a pro at BF2, right? So there are like three major settings that we're changing here. The first setting that we are changing is uh, the control map, add key to trigger mapping, blah, 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 blah. This one, uh, CPI action, IDF keyboard, ID key underscore space. I think the default on this is 10,000 and zero. What we're going to do is we're going to change that to zero and zero. So one thing to note is these values, I'll just give you a quick sort of like BF2 lesson. Um, the first value is like essentially like a sleep time. Like, can you can you hold this button down? What What's the sort of sleep time on it to repeat it? Um, zero value is none uh, for the first part. And anything above that is obviously considered as the game as being a, a sort of sleep value. The second one is whether it's just primary or secondary control. Um, so I have a... a, a secondary control for backspace here so it has the 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 one here so don't worry about this last did you only need to worry about this number we're changing this to zero for the sole purpose of being able to hold down spacebar and execute frame perfect bunny hopping this has such an amazing advantage when you're trying to go up hills um, at the end of this video i'll quickly jump in game and show you what i'm talking about it's really cool guys like so many people don't have this setting and it's just like amazing you know i'll probably only use it like maybe once a week and get out of dodge but sometimes like when you're coming up against a hill that you know you can't execute frame perfect jumps on then this is great so essentially all it does is you hold down space bar and it tells the game this person is trying to jump like 40 times a second now i can't press my space bar 40 times a second right i just can't do it so if I just have this setting, I don't have to ruin my thumbs, I don't have to ruin my keyboard, and the game will just do it for me, it'll just execute frame perfect. Um, you can also do this with the TV missile. So many, many moons ago, you know, when like I was active in the 2v2 scene, everyone was like using macros and releasing macros and filling around with auto hockey. You know, I still have my macro from like way back in the day. Like I'm talking nine years ago when I used to be like a 2v2 boss. Um, but I, I stopped using it because I found this setting. I can't remember. I, I didn't invent it. Um, I think I found it on some forum somewhere and someone was like, yeah, it was pretty cool. Uh, so it is located in control map dot create heli play input control map. Make sure you're in the right section here, guys. There are different sections, right? So at the top we've got infantry player, then we've got land player, then we've got air, then we've got helicopter. So we want to make sure that it's in the helicopter section because we only want it to be relevant to when we're in the helicopter. It is control map add button blah 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 fire button. So ID button underscore zero and this value I think is zero by default. We want to change this to 0 0.0334. Now I have no real idea why this value has to be this one or above. So you can have it as 0 0.5, you can have it as 0. 1 you can have it as 1 you can have it as 10 if you really want to but this is the lowest possible value that basically this is the lowest possible sleep time right so what you're telling the game is i'm gonna send you 30 clicks a second or just about that so 0 0.333 is obviously one like one third of um one right so i think i think this may have something to do with like frames per second and the game only interprets like Obviously, the game runs high, like can run higher than 30 frames per second. So I'm not entirely sure why this is the value, but it is. So everyone decent uses 0 .00, uh, 0.0334, and this allows you to just hold your left mouse button down, and the TV will fire 
literally as uh, it will register as many clicks as possible. And that doesn't matter to a lot of people, but it's essentially like just a left click macro. So you just have to hold your button down. You don't have to hurt your fingers. You know, you get to be a little bit of a noob. Um, and you can focus more on aiming and making really good curve shots and that kind of thing. This third setting that I'm going to show you is optional. It's located in default player map. Yeah, okay. So this is essentially the same one. I may actually be able to change the value on this one. I don't know. I've never tried changing the value on this one. Um, so it's in default game control map. This value here essentially means that whenever I have the map open or like the squad screen, I can also hold left click to click mad. Now, this has one purpose for me, and that is when I'm on one team and I want to switch on to the other team, say I'm playing with a friend and they say I'm on US, come over to US side, I can hold my left click button down on the US flag, like when I'm dead, to switch over to the US, and as soon as that spot becomes available, I will instantly get switched, because I'm, I'm telling the game like 30 times a second, I want to join the US, and because auto balance is on on a lot of servers, it won't allow me to switch to US, until there's actually a free space. So it allows me to eventually switch over um, and I'll be the first person to do it. Obviously, if someone else is there with the 0 0.00334, it's gonna make it harder for me to get over, but I'm, I'm, I'm willing to take that sacrifice, guys, just teach you something. This does mess up like small things in Commander. It's not a major inconvenience, uh, inconvenience um, but it just kind of it just kind of messes with a few of your left clicks here and there. It's, it's not a big deal. And I, I think the benefits outweigh the, uh, the losses. One thing to note here, guys, when we edit this file, controls, properties, read only. This needs to be a read only file. If you don't set it to read only, it will reset uh, various settings and we don't like that. Um, so I'm fairly sure that's pretty much everything that I need to cover in this area. So what we're going to do is just quickly go in game and I'm going to show you just a few more settings. Now, hopefully when we load up, we'll see my dollar sign, dollar sign, dot, dot, dollar sign, dollar sign prefix. And hopefully that worked. Maybe it did, maybe it didn't. But yeah, I'm going to quickly go in game, guys. Um, and I'm just going to, uh, right, the first thing I'm going to do is going to show you my video settings, a few of the control settings. Then we're going to go in game. I'm going to show you bunny hopping. And what else am I going to show you? I can't remember what else. All right, so you see my prefix work. Dollar sign, dollar sign, dot, dot, dollar sign, dollar sign. So, yay. I'm not a complete fool. Come on, log in, log in, log in. You guys ever do this? Like you put, ah, uh, you ever put like the little spinning two in the corner to try and line it up? I always do that shit. Uh, options. So uh, opt out of voting. It doesn't really do any. Opt out of voting should just remove you, remove voting altogether. Um, I have these settings that's here. I don't really think it makes too much of a difference. I think this one like always glitches or whatever. Make sure your connection setting is set to T1. I have my uh, crosshair as pink because um, I like to get in touch with my feminine side from time to time. I have my transparency for HUD and minimap set to 50%, icons and crosshair to 0%. You can fiddle around with these and make them however you want. Uh, one thing that you should never, ever, ever do, and that I've seen one recent player on the Battle Log forums do, is he's made his icons, so they're like kind of like this. And as you can see up here, like, it's just so ugly. Absolutely ugly. I think 50 50 0, 0 is like pro level esports. Um, you can take the HUD down lower, but then you can't kind of see who's in vehicles with you, which really kind of sucks because you want to be able to see what names are there. So I usually don't. It's not the information around here usually isn't that useful. All right, so into controls, guys. Um, I have changed my parachute to backspace as well as nine. Backspace is like a bigger button and it's more easier to locate on my keyboard or easier, not more, e more easier. Is that an incorrect use of superlative? Anyway, uh, backspace because it's just a button that's more accessible than parachute is. You can, ha you can say, I think you can set it to space bar in the settings, but I just never got around to that. Cause I mean, my fingers aren't that fat that I can't hit backspace, right? Uh, so in all of my vehicle ones, the only thing I'm going to really show you here is the uh, camera positions. So I change all of the weapon locations just into uh, cockpit, chase front, chase rear, flyby. So this means that I can press one, two, three, four in a vehicle and change views really importantly. If you want to get good at this game, you need to do this. You need to change the views, especially here especially here the aircraft is like so important to have rear view right you need to constantly be switching between your views you can use c if you're a total noob but set it to one two three four guys like you will never ever ever live to regret that decision no one has ever woken up and said you know what i really regret resetting my bf2 camera positions to one two three four right uh same as helicopter yeah blah 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 blah. falcon these settings are completely useless because this thing never kicked off and no one has ever used it in the history of battlefield 2 
videos. I don't know why this is set to low. Shouldn't this be custom or something? I don't know why it's set to low. Anyway, my pro esports dodgebot.exe settings are low terrain, high effects, high geometry, high texture, low lighting, dynamic shadows, dynamic light off, anti-aliasing times eight, texture filtering high. These are the best settings that I have ever found. I've never found anything better. These settings are like pretty much in line with what everyone should have. And I can't think of a single reason why you'd want to change these things, especially these. When you're playing on maps, say like Sharky Peninsula, when you're around, you know, the crane area, the flag that's like on top of that building thing. Um, there's a lot of shadows there, which make it kind of hard to see what's going on. But when you turn off the dynamic shadows and dynamic light, it just kind of removes all that nonsense. So you can really see things really brightly. Um, audio settings, I don't think there's anything in here I need to play around with or mess around with. Uh, I, tw I turned down my voiceover because I was getting like loads of, I don't know, I think I've created my account again and I was being told how to play Battlefield 2 and I was like, dude, stop insulting me, I know how to do it, right? Um, okay, so let's quickly jump into a game. What map am I going to be able to show you, both the TV and the jumping? Ugh, I don't like this video too long. Oh well, so let's go delay and plant. Yep, let's go to land plant. That's the best way to do it. Yeah, you ever do this as well, where like you kind of line up the line up the two on various lines. This one's a bit too fat though. You can't really put it anywhere anywhere useful, can you? It doesn't line up anywhere cleanly. Maybe someone can comment in the comment sections where they put their little battlefield two crosshair as it's loading. All right, join game. So you can see this um, this what do you call it? These customizations also change it so the Waiting for more players is more over to the right hand side, so I don't have it like smack bang in the middle of my game. Um, you see how I spot here as well? It doesn't actually show that um, I've spotted anything. And then it just says bloke spotted instead of whatever else. Um, I don't think I can really show you anything else about bots. So what I'm going to quickly do is just show you how this thing curls. Um, so yeah, with the just me holding my left button down so you can kind of like go crazy with it. Uh, in single player, like you just get like a mad TV but you have like literally like just no latency at all. So you can like literally just do like the most amazing shoot girl shots ever. You know, it's like shooting pretty much behind me. Alright, uh, the last thing I wanted to show you guys was bunny hopping so we'll jump in a chat real quick. I die, I'm going to press backspace. Thank you very much. One thing I should have done there is looked up because you actually travel uh, quicker in the direction that you want to go in if you look up while you're sort of like falling to the ground. Anyway, so I'm going to start jumping up here guys just to show you that you can mad money hop. I think if you actually go backwards it makes it a bit easier. Um, but you can do this on lots of areas. This area is kind of fun to do it on because you can, I I'm fairly sure you can jump like all the way up to the, uh, the J10 uncap. Um, and yeah, if I, I, if I was to try and do this manually, then I'd just get uh, absolutely destroyed. You can't go up like vertical stuff, so sometimes you do get stuck. I should have probably planned this out and come up with a better route. But yeah, if you, you know, you can kind of see like the benefit that you get here, guys. Because you can really just jump up into insane locations uh, by doing this. There's a nice spot up in, Sh um, in Striker Garkin that you can do. And, you know, I'd wager anyone like a pint of musty water that there's no way they'd ever be able to get up here without doing what I just did. So, yeah, guys, uh, that's the end of the settings.com video. Uh, all this general settings and customization and that kind of thing. Check out the description for all the downloads and whatever else. I will say, this is like a little bit, a little bit of a teaser, a little bit of a teaser for the future. I have potentially discovered a way in Battlefield 2 to change various font sizes of information. I haven't been able to do it, but... I, I know there are commands and things that I can f potentially fiddle around with them. So maybe in future, in a couple of weeks, I don't know. I don't know how much time I'm going to be able to devote to it. I may be coming out with a video devoted to how you can change font sizes and various stuff in Battlefield 2. Um, I tried many, many years ago, and I couldn't get it, but I felt like I could. And now I'm going to go back again. It was the, it was the one that got away. So, um, yeah, stay tuned for that, guys. I'm sure you're looking forward to it. Anyway, that's the end of this video. Peace. Hope the information was useful. Blah, 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 blah. Goodbye.